litter bug. Rat bag. <laughs> Afternoon, Mr. Wiggly. Hello, Mr. Wiggly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's talking to himself again. Chuck is probably lonely. Lonely is bonkers. <laughs> Come on, Tom. Let's give him a cup of tea. Well, he might have wanted to be interrupted. I mean, the conversation might have reached an interesting point. Come on. <laughs> oh, all right, then. Come on. Then. And when the weather is a little more clement, we'll get you out and harden you up. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Yes, of course you would. <clears throat> oh. We wondered if you'd like a cup of tea. Oh, that's very kind of you. Now, do come in. Oh, dear, I, I should have more seats in here in case of guests, but I've never got round to it. There. Oh, no. Allow me. Uh, thank you. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, oh, you noticed. I, I hope you don't think I'm potty. <laughs> Good Lord, no! <laughs> I mean, the most natural thing in the world. People talk to themselves, isn't it, Bob? Yes, it is. I'm always doing it. Honestly. Oh, but I, I, I'm not talking to myself. Aren't you? Oh, no. Well, who are you talking to, Mr. Wakeley? One of my marrows. <laughs> ah, I see. Oh, there, now you really do think I'm potty. No, I don't blame you. A lot of people think it's a bit odd talking to plants, but I happen to believe in it. What do you say to them? Well, you heard me, really. It's just a matter of well-mannered conversation. They do respond, you know. Well, that one certainly has. I've never seen a yard-long cucumber before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's always been very precocious. You're a proper little show-off, aren't you? <laughs> uh, is it just one of those uh, inexplicable things, or is there a principle behind it? Oh, there's a principle, all right. Uh, broadly speaking, I suppose you might call it the Brotherhood of Creation. They won the Eurovision Song Contest, didn't they? Oh. <laughs> now, tell me, what is common to all living things? Well, they're uh, all alive. Barbara, really? Exactly, young lady. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes, we're all alive, and, and we find ourselves cheek by jowl on this planet. Well, doesn't it seem reasonable that we should do our best to live in harmony? Well, yes, but plants don't have ears. How can they hear what you say? <laughs> Come, speech is only the manifestation of the feeling that we're giving out. Yes, I see what you mean. I mean, you can call a dog all sorts of names. If you do it nicely, he'll just roll over on his back and go all soppy, won't he? Exactly. May I say, Mr. Good, that you are blessed with a very intelligent wife? Well, I understand it as well. <laughs> I understand it. What I'm saying is I'm not sure I believe it. Well, I, I'm not asking you to believe it. I, I'm merely suggesting that you don't disbelieve it. Well, they are being, are they? Oh, yes. Yes, and happy. Ah. Uh. <laughs> yes, well, it's been all been very, very interesting. Thank you very much, Wakeling. Now, come along, Barbara. <clears throat> yes, it's been very interesting talking to you, Mr. Wakeling. Very interesting. Jolly good. And thank you for the tea. <clears throat> ah. Oh, -ho. it's time for the concert. <laughs> Ah, Delius. We love Delius. I'm not keen on him, actually, but the tomatoes love him. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, Tom, what do you think? Wow. Talking to plants, a bit far-fetched, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, old girl. I'm hungry. <laughs> yes, I suppose it is a bit far-fetched, talking to plants. Quite. Whereas talking to engines, that's perfectly normal. <laughs> Kids today, they don't know how to play cowboys and Indians, do they? I thought they were very good. Very good rubbish. One of them was firing at me with a plastic ray gun. Modern Indians. Uh, we used to make our own bows and arrows when I was a kid. I had a smashing nurse's set. We didn't have girls in our gang. Soppy lot. Playing with little girls in their nurse's set could have been your passport to puberty. I was too busy catching rustlers. My friend Arthur Leggett used to be the Lone Ranger and I was Tonto. Well, gallop over to the sink and build some spuds. Yes, Kimasabi. <laughs> Hello, Mr. 
Margot. Good evening, Barbara. Good evening, John. <laughs> I have just come to say thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> Margot! What are you thanking us for? For nothing. You don't have to thank us every time we do nothing. <laughs> Those children are perfectly happy on the council estate. I don't see why you have to encourage them into the avenue. Tommy, to catch a glimpse of your house, Margot. After all, they've got to know what they're aiming at in life. Children like that do not have aims in life. Not since the introduction of comprehensive education. <laughs> but it's still a free country, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. That's why I think they should be banned from the avenue. They're only little kids, Margot. Little kids playing games. Well, their games and yours disrupted an important meeting in my drawing room. Tupperware party? Certainly. <laughs> It was an extraordinary meeting of certain members of the Music Society. I thought they'd given you the boot. I resigned. <laughs> then why the meeting? Well, let's just say that I've been persuaded to throw my hat into the ring again. Oh! Apparently, there is a feeling abroad that Miss Manshaft is a spent force as president of the Society. Oh, is that what you're telling everybody? Certainly not. <laughs> I have remained aloof. I am merely holding myself in readiness should the call come. Like General de Gaulle? If you like, yes. What does Miss Mountshaft have to say about all this? We don't know. She's on holiday in Greece. Oh, I see. So while she's away, there's your up next door plotting a revolution. If you must have a political analogy, I'd sooner you thought of it as a right-wing coup. Of course. R.I.P. Miss Mountshaft. For the sake of music, one hopes so. In the meantime, I shall be having several further significant meetings this week. So, I would ask you to... Well, to... <laughs> to, um... Lock ourselves in the cellar so we don't embarrass you. The choice of words is yours, Tom, but the general meaning is correct. <laughs> Very well, Margot. We'll do our best. Thank you, Barbara. I tell you what. Give us a shilling each and we'll go and play in the next street. <laughs> I'd give you the fare to Kathmandu, Tom, if I thought you'd go. <laughs> uh. Smashing. Thank you. Mind you, I thought the way the potatoes were peeled was the crucial factor in the enjoyment of that meal. I didn't. No, I suppose you are a moderately wonderful cook. Yes, I am. In fact, I'm so wonderful that you probably want to do the washing up, don't you? No. Oh. Now, I want to just sit here with my glass of Peapod 75. <laughs> and just have a little thick. You're thinking about me and my nurse's set, aren't you? No. Mr. Wicked. In his nurse's yes, set. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously, no. His theory is about talking to plants. I'm not sure you should have poo pooed them so readily. Rotten cheek! <laughs> I'm the one he said was intelligent. I know, but you just accepted it on its face value. I have thought it through. You have just gone all around the houses to come to the same conclusion. Now, you see, I see it like this. Now, our crops are important to us, very important. Now, anything that could increase their yield is worth trying. It doesn't matter if it sounds funny or weird. I think you should open your mind and try it. Do you know what I think, Tom? What? I think I should open my mind and try it, too. Have you still got your nurses set? <laughs> Tom? In here. Tom, you know, I was worried about putting that little runt back for the other piglets. Yeah? Well, I mean, Dabby's a little bully. He's just beaten up two of his brothers. Good show. What's you doing? Oh, nothing much. I'm just, uh... Just about to roll back the frontiers of science, that's all. Yes, but what are you doing? Setting up our talking to plants experiment. Well, why can't we just chat to them while we're working in the garden? No, 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 no. It's too hit and miss. You see, now, sometimes we're in a good mood, and sometimes we're in a rotten mood. Well, they wouldn't know whether they were coming or going, would they? Now, I'm going to measure this thing from scratch. All right, Einstein, have it your way. No, right. Hmm? Now, perfect. Plant A. Plant B. Plant C. OK? Yes, I think I grasp it so far. <laughs> Good, good, good. Now, plant A will be exposed to 20 seconds of affection and encouragement five times a day. All right? Plant B will simply fend for itself because it's the control, you see? Yes, sir, Professor. All right. Now, plant C will be exposed for exactly the same time as plant A to derision and hate. <laughs> That's not fair. Well, we'll make it up to it after the experiment. <laughs> now, do you follow? Yes. Any questions? Yes. Where are the plants? I have planted them. They're runner beans. Oh. All right, now, you are love and I am hate. That sounds right. Watch it. <laughs> now, where, now, where did I put the clipboard? Where's my clipboard gone? Where, uh. What's the matter? 
<laughs> you, it's as if you were making a bionic man. <laughs> Barbara, a scientific experiment should be must, must be carried out with the utmost accuracy and efficiency. What's the date? I don't know. No. Well, we'll scrub around that right now. <laughs> now, when I take the cover off plant A, I want you to give it 20 seconds of love and encouragement. Are you ready? No. What's the matter now? <laughs> Talking to a bean. <laughs> it's silly. You didn't think so yesterday. Well, I wasn't face to face with a bean then, was I? <laughs> Look, for someone who claimed to have an instinctive understanding of what old Mr. Wakeling was talking about... All right, all right, all right, all right, I will. I will try. Just got stage fright, that's all. Oh. <laughs> I will, I'll try. Fine. Only don't look at me. All right. <laughs> Ready and go. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Otherwise, I won't do it. <laughs> and go. Hello, my darling. <laughs> oh, I've been so looking forward to this moment alone with you because I want to tell you that I love you. Do you know that I love you so much? And you and I are going to be so happy because I'm going to look after you and I'm going to tend you and you and I are going to have the most wonderful, wonderful relationship. <laughs> all right, all right. Don't go raving mad. Was that all right? Yes, fine. Very good. Well, why are you scowling? Who are you thinking about? <laughs> you? Yes, well... <laughs> you can't be jealous of a bean. <laughs> I'll make my notes. Plant A exposed for 20 seconds to over-sex laboratory system. <laughs> All right, come on, hate. It's your turn. Yes, yes. Ready? No, oh, no, you see, I'm not really... Ha I don't really feel hateful today. I'm not in a hateful mood. I'm in a sort of rather even sort of mood. Oh, by the way, did I tell you that the Inland Revenue sent our tax returns back with a slip saying, don't be facetious? The pompous swine, I'll smash their face. Really? Yes, I am. Sanctuary, sanctuary. What's up, Jerry? Margot, she's got her jumped off kernels round from the Music Society. Oh, well, never mind, sit down. You can stay for lunch if you like. Oh, thank you, I will. Certainly shan't get any from Margot. She's too busy making the final arrangements for putting the skids under Miss Mountshaft. Would you mind just keeping quiet for 20 seconds? Why 20 seconds? Well, we're doing something rather important. Oh, yes, of course, sorry. Really? Ready. So! <laughs> so! Ha, you call yourself a bean, do you? <laughs> you could have certainly fooled me. I wouldn't bother growing if I were you. There's no point in you growing. And you know why? You know why? Because the moment you pop your head out of that soil, the moment they see you above that soil, everyone's going to fall about laughing. But you wouldn't make me laugh, and I'll tell you why. Because I hate you. And you know why I hate you? Because you're horrible. You're horrible, 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 horrible. <laughs> Yeah. All right? Very good. Yeah. Well, with rest and care, I don't see you need being the... <laughs> In the institution for more than about 25 years. Well, I suppose that must have looked a bit weird to you. Well, marginally. <laughs> well, we're carrying out our experiments in talking to plants, you see. So I understand. It's very interesting. Yes, very. Eh? About as interesting as trying to breed cardboard boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that, Toddle, dear. We don't believe or disbelieve as yet. We have open minds. Vacant, I should have said. You wouldn't say that if you'd met Mr. Wakely. Who's Mr. Wakeling? Percy Thrower's tutor. <laughs> Please not. He's a very nice old man who's not afraid to try a bit of alternative technology. Technology? <laughs> Talking to plants. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something, Jerry. What's your company's latest line in plastic gifts for cereal packets? Well, it's a miniature set of the Bay City Rollers, actually. <laughs> a miniature set of plastic Bay City Rollers. Well, if that's all your technology can come up with, I'd sooner talk to plants. Oh, dear. I just forfeited my invitation to lunch. No, Jerry, it's all right. There's nothing wrong with a bit of healthy scepticism. If you get out of control, I can always set the celery on you. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Jerry, another point of view, you know, might be very useful. As a matter of fact, I've got, I've got a lot of ideas about this empathy with plants business. Perhaps I could put them to you over lunch. Do you know, I think I've changed my mind. I believe I'll just have a plowman's at the pub after all. Misery. Cynic. See you later. Bye-bye, table. Goodbye, chair. <laughs> Bye, curtains. Hello, garden. Tom! 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 What's the matter? The beans, they're growing, they're growing. Lime, I thought it was a burglar or something. They're up, they're up. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, good. Oh. They're getting somewhere. Oh, Douglas is biggest. <laughs> Who? Douglas, my bean. He's biggest. Don't you mean specimen A? No, I mean Douglas. Douglas. He, oh, he is biggest. Now, quick, come on, let's measure him. All right, all right. Douglas, B. <laughs> well. Douglas. 
Specimen A is the biggest. <laughs> Control comes second, and my rotten little stinker at the end is the smallest. <laughs> Mr. Wakeley was right. I think I ought to tell you that the difference is minimal. Well, it's still a difference, isn't it? Yes, I know it is, but you know, let's just see the week out before we write our learned paper to the Royal Society. You don't seem very excited. You shouldn't get excited in science, it's not seemly. I bet Albert Einstein didn't charge around his house shouting, Oh, blimey, listen, everybody's face is curved! <laughs> Rubbish Archimedes ran down the street shouting Eureka! Only because his bathwater was too hot. <laughs> Where did you get that? From the attic. Is it ours? Is it ours? This is the worldly good I endowed you with when we got married. Oh, yes, so it is. It was on his last legs then. You've had it since you were four. It's still a piece of precision engineering. This will see us out. <laughs> I should think you will. You can't use it. You know, they don't make all oh, those wax cylinders nowadays. Seventy-eights, and I've got one. But what's it for, Tom? I'm going to play to the plants in the garden, see if they grow any bigger than last year. If so, uh, yes, ah, Mr. Wakeling's other theory, it's worth a go. What's the record? Peter Dawson singing the bandolero. <laughs> I don't think I know that one. It's marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. We always used to play this after tea on Sunday. You know, after the cucumber sandwiches and the Battenberg. <laughs> ah, yes. Great days, the old days. I am the bandolero, the bandolero. I rule the mountains and I play, and I'm the band that has my way. I am the bandolero, king of the song. Margot, I'll be here in a moment. <laughs> Uh, anything I can get anybody? No. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Oh. <clears throat> Margot, I'll be here in a moment. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. Couldn't get Johnny Hanson to put the telephone down. <laughs> oh, I see you've brought your trusty old pipe along, Mr. Chipchit. Do open the French windows, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you won't be wanting me. Oh, but we just... will, Jerry. I've taken the liberty of preparing a little champagne buffet for later. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, Madam Acting Chairwoman. Do carry on. Thank you very much, Mrs. Lefebvre. I call this extraordinary meeting of the Music Society to order. <laughs> As you know, we are here to elect a president to our society for the forthcoming year. As you also know, there are two candidates for this high office. Mrs. Ledbetter... Oh. ...and Miss Munch. A point of order, Mr. Chipchase. I still think it is unconstitutional and indeed underhanded to hold an election while Miss Munchaft is on holiday in Greece. <laughs> May I reply? I please do. Do learn your society's rules, Mr. Chipchase. There are sufficient members here to form a quorum. It is perfectly legal. Yes. I yes, still sir. think it's unfair to Miss Munchaft. I don't see why. You see more than an adequate mouthpiece for her. <laughs> is that a burn? Well, as I seem to have the floor, there are just one or two remarks I should like to make. Firstly, I did not seek office. It is simply that I seem to have been chosen as the standard bearer for those of us who seek to put a more professional gloss on our production. Yeah, here, here. Right. Now, let me touch on Dolly Munchaft for a moment. Here we go. Vilification. No, Mr. Chipchase. Admiration. No one is more aware than I of how much Dolly Munchaft has put into this society. And no one is more aware of the awful toll it has taken on her general health, her nerves, and her voice. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if at this moment Dolly were not sitting in some taverna with her bottle of ouzo, almost wishing that she loses this election. She doesn't even know about it. And if I am chosen <clears throat> to take up the tiller of our little ship, I shall do so humbly. And in so doing, I shall call upon all of you to wish dear Dolly a happy harbour in the back row of the chorus. Where are you going, Jerry? <laughs> There's right. no time for that. We're coming up to the boating. I want you to pass around the boating steps, please. Yes, of course. I still feel, Madam Acting May Chairman... I close with three little points concerning what I can offer? One, fundraising activities on a scale never dreamt of by dear, unworldly Dolly. For example, Jeremy, my husband, has already promised the Society a cheque for £200. <laughs> Assuming I'm elected. <laughs> Two, a guaranteed season at the town hall. But we've been banned. After the sound of music, the mayor said we gave the borough a bad name. I had lunch with Charles yesterday. It wasn't so much our performance, you know. He was just a little hurt that Miss Mountshaft forgot the customary bouquet of flowers for the mayor's. Nevertheless, And three, rehearsal facilities. My home. 
Of course one remembers very fondly those bohemian evenings in Miss Mountshaft's flatlet in the high street. That jolly cup of cocoa, sound of little children playing overhead. How many of them were there, I wonder? Of course, I can't provide all that. All I can offer is what you see. A spacious, moderately comfortable environment. A little haven of peace and tranquility. <laughs> Hello, my darling Douglas. How are you? You are the most wonderful little bean, you know. And if I was a little girl bean, do you You know did what? deliberately, didn't you? You just had to. I shall never forgive you, never. What are you on about? You playing that wretched music in the garden. That is Peter Dawson. I don't care who it is. You have just ruined my whole election campaign. Good. How dare you? Well, why not? You just ruined our experiment. Oh, Douglas, oh, Douglas. <laughs> Who's Douglas? My bean, my bean. Oh, really, Barbara, do keep a sense of proportion. Now, look here, Margot, I am... Madam President. What? Congratulations. You mean I'm, I'm the president? Yeah. In spite of Peter Dawson? Obviously. Oh, oh Jerry. Oh, oh Barbara. Oh. Don't you cut on me. <laughs> You have just stunted Douglas's growth. Um, I'm so sorry. Well, Jerry will write out a cheque for any damage I do. It's my function, you know. Yes. Well, I must get back. Yeah, and I warn you, Margot, you haven't heard the last of Peter Dawson. Oh, I hope not. He was a fine artiste. A fine artiste. <laughs> How much do I owe you? Well, I mean, it's a week's work up the spout. We've got to start from scratch now. How much? Well, I don't know. I mean, how can you put a price on a scientific experiment? What are the grants the government pay to research botanists? How much? <laughs> well, Peter, mate, you didn't get a knighthood, but you got the next best thing. Margot approves of you. <laughs> I'm getting worried about you. What? Well, he's talking to things. He's getting out of hand. You're even talking to gramophone records now. I'm hoping it'll grow into an LP. <laughs> Do you think music has an effect on animals? Well, some farmers use music in the cow shed. They claim it increases the milk yield. Perhaps you should try it with Geraldine. What about chickens? They can't milk chickens. <laughs> no, I mean their eggs.